ہے ٹوڈے ول ڈسکس ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف بونس دیٹ وی کین ہیو وتھ بریک ورک رائٹ سو یو کڈ سی ایف یو لوک ایٹ دس پرٹیکولر امیج وی ہیو سم پیٹرن رائٹ دیر از اے پیٹرن آف لئنگ دی بریکس ٹو کنسٹرکٹ اے واو سو دیز بیسک پیٹرنس آر بیسڈ آن سم ٹائپس آف بونس سو ول ڈسکس دوز ٹائپس آف بونس سو بونس از دا میتھڈ آف ارینجنگ دی بریکس ان کورسز ان ورٹیکل جوائنٹس آف سکسیو کورسز آر ناٹ ان سیم لائن سو وین وی سی بونس آف بریکس دیر آر ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف بونس آف بریکس وی ہیو انگلش بون وی ہیو فلمس بون وی ہیو ہیڈ اے بون we have a uh, stretcher bone we have also have a uh, zigzag bone so there are different ways to arrange bricks so we'll discuss all those uh, types of um, different arrangements of bricks right so if you look at the basic rules for bonding uh, bricks should be of uniform size so in the last class only we had discussed how important are the size and shape of a brick is right we should always go for first uh, first class or uh, the um, premium quality bricks to have a good aesthetic appeal um, in 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 on our walls right? so bricks should be of uniform size then use of brick beds should be discouraged except in special locations so use of these brick beds or closures um, is always discouraged in a normal wall unless we uh, are working on a joint like the l joint like the t joint or in different corner parts we should not use those beds even if you look at this particular image there is no uh, evidence of using beds or closer right so it is always uh, discouraged to use brick beds or brick closures i hope you know about uh, the difference between a brick bed and a brick closer any doubt regarding that brick bed and brick closer okay i hope there is no doubt then a vertical joints in alternate courses should be along same perpend right mm -hmm. so if you look at this particular image this you, you can, can you see my cursor mouse cursor yes sir. yes sir okay so if you see this is a particular layer right this is the first layer then we have this second layer then we have this third layer fourth layer fifth layer but if you look at these joints these joints this particular joint is here in the first layer then on the second layer we don't have this particular joint on the same line right and but again in the next layer in the third layer we have this particular joint so alternate courses these joints should be on a same on the same alignment in alternate courses not in the same course so what would happen if if the joints are in the same alignment uh, in, in in the next course only see if this happens this particular joint is there if if it is there in this uh, course also if there is not quick or if there is an uh, you know natural disaster this particular wall will is a uh, wall will easily break so to avoid those conditions to avoid those situations we do not provide the joints in the same alignment in the next course it is always there in the alternate course correct now we have these basic types of bones uh, we have stretcher bone we have head bone we have english bone flemish bone and jigsaw bone so um stretcher bone head bone english bone flemish bone all these uh, four types of bones you could see uh, on our walls then uh, if you talk about the zigzag bone normally we uh, go for this zigzag bone on flooring patterns if i have to construct a floor with bricks then we go for the zigzag bone normally we do not um, adapt this zigzag bone on our wall building walls now this particular bond is a stretcher bond so there are uh, in the last class we had discussed the 
you know nomenclature of the brick what is the header what, what is the stretcher so if you see this particular brick unit this would be the header and this would be the stretcher so if i can see the uh, stretcher portion on a brick wall like this all the courses with all the stretchers then this particular wall becomes the uh, wall with stretcher bond correct so bricks are laid as stretchers on the faces of wall length of brick is along the face so you could see we 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 can we could we could see all the stretcher of these brick units this is stretcher this is stretcher this is stretcher so all the stretchers then use for walls which have thickness of half brick that is 9 cm so what does this half thickness brick and full thickness brick uh, means is if you orient this particular brick in this way so that uh, the thickness of the brick is uh, wall is uh, equal to the thickness of this particular brick right so that becomes a uh, half brick wall but if you orient this particular brick in that way so that the full length of uh, the brick is used uh, as the thickness of the wall then that wall becomes a full brick wall so now this is the half brick wall so if i have to construct a half brick wall i have to orient my bricks this way so, i mean that means we need to go for the stretcher bond then use this partition walls chimney stocks so normally for partition walls uh, we go for a stretcher bond because we don't have to uh, provide full brick thickness then this bond is not possible if thickness is more so if i have to um, go for you know full brick or one and a half brick uh, thickness wall um, this particular stretcher bond is not used to construct that particular wall so you could see this is the elevation of stretcher bond this is the plan of stretcher bond and this is the isometric view of the stretcher bone. So you could see how these bricks units are oriented, right? So this is the stretcher portion. This is the header portion. So this this is the header. This is the stretcher. So on both the sides, on the, from this side or, and from this side, we could only see the stretcher portion of the brick. So this is the stretcher bone. Stretcher bone. So uh, if you see, we have two plans to plan one and plan two. In this particular plan, we have the plans of one, three and five. And in this particular plan, we have two, four, six courses. Six courses means this become course one, then this becomes course two, then this become course three, then course four. Course uh, uh, means uh, the layer, right? This is the layer number one. This is the layer number two. This is layer number three, layer number four. So if you see the layer number one and the layer number three, the plan of the layer number one and layer number three would be the same plan. So we have drafted uh, layer number one, three and five with this particular sequence on a single plan. And with this particular sequence, two, four, six on this particular plan, correct? Any doubts? So this is isometric view. This is elevation. Elevation means what you would be able to see from this particular side or this particular side, right? Then we have these plans. So stretcher bond is done. Then we have header bond. So what uh, what happens in a stretcher bond? We could see the head uh, stretcher portion of the brick, and in case of the header bond, we would be able to see the header portion of the brick, right? So bricks are laid down as headers. Uh, use only when thickness of wall is equal to one brick, right? So uh, in this particular stretcher bone, when the thickness of the wall is half brick, then we should go for the stretcher bone. When we have one brick full thick, uh, full thickness wall, then we we can go for this header bone, right? Because the orientation is different orientation of laying the brick is different correct uh, this bond is not suitable for transmitting pressure in the direction of wall hence not used for load bearing wall so if the wall is a load bearing wall we should not go for this header bond 
So in the last class only we had discussed about different types of structures. So one uh, there, there are two basic types of structures. One is the load bearing structure and the second one is the frame structure. Frame structure. So what happens in a load bearing structure? The walls of the structure takes the load. But in case of the frame structure, the walls of the structure doesn't take the load, correct? So it goes through the beams and columns to the foundation. But in case of the load bearing walls, it uh, the load of the total structure goes to the wall first, then it goes to the foundation, correct? So uh, for load uh, construction of load bearing walls, we should not go for header bone. Then use for curved wig walk. So we if we have a curved wall, then we can go for this header bone. Now you could see the thickness of the wall. This is the thickness of this is the plan. Plan of two, four, six cores with this sequence and plan of this sequence. One, three, six, uh, one, three, five. It, sh it should be five, correct? So one, three, five, seven, like this. So this is the isometric. This is the elevation. This is again the elevation. So you could see the thickness of the wall is full brick. So we have, because we have oriented the bricks in this direction, correct? And the last one, we had oriented the bricks in this particular orient orientation. So it was half brick wall and this is full brick wall. When we use the full length of the brick, it becomes a full brick wall. And if you use the half, uh, uh, you know, half thickness of the brick to construct that particular wall, that then becomes the half brick wall. So this is a full brick wall. So you could see how uh, the bricks are laid on different courses. And this is the isometric. These are headers. Header, 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 header. So we could only see the headers. So this is why this is uh, this particular bone is called the header bone. So any issue in stretcher bone, we could we would be able to see the stretcher portion. In the header bone, we would be able to see the header portion. Fine. Now this one is uh, the third type uh, of brick bone. This is called the English bond. So most commonly uh, used bond for all wall thickness, uh, strongest bond, alternate course of headers and stretchers, vertical joints of header courses come over each other. Same with stretcher in order to break the vertical joints in the successive courses. It is essential to place queen closer after the first uh, quorn header in each heading course. In a stretcher course, the lap must be minimum one fourth of the length. So uh, these are some uh, basic techniques to construct English bone, right? So what happened in case of header and stretcher bone? We could see the headers on the header bone. We could see the stretchers on the stretcher bone. But in case of this particular English bone, we you'd be able to see headers as well as the stretchers. So one layer would consist of all the stretcher. And then the next layer would be consist would be consisting of the all the headers, correct? So alternate layers of headers and stretchers. For if the first layer is stretcher, second layer would be header. Then the third layer would be stretcher. Then the fourth layer would be again the headers. So alternate courses of headers and stretchers. So this becomes our English bond. So then if you see the plan of those courses or layers. So uh, the course one, three, five, seven, you could see the orientation of the brick units and uh, the layers two, four, six, eight, you could see the orientation of the bricks. So this is how English bond is constructed. Any issue in the header bone, we could see the headers in the stretcher bone. We could see the stretchers in, the, in this particular English bone, headers as well as the stretchers in alternate layers. Now see, this one is English bone. This one is also English bone, but the thickness is different, right? This is one 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 brick uh, thickness wall, and this one is one and half brick thickness wall. Correct. But if you look at the elevation, you would be, be able to see the same type of elevation. One course with headers 
and one course with stretchers alternate header and stretcher alternate header and stretchers so elevation would be same but the arrangement of bricks on the plane would be little different right so this is uh, the stretcher portion then this is the header portion you could see this is one brick wall this is one and half brick wall why it is called one and half brick because this this full length is one brick wall this full length is one there's again we have introduced uh, the bricks in this particular fashion so it becomes one and half brick so this is one and half brick this is one and half brick so now we have four type of brick bone that is flemish bone uh, each course is comprised of alternate headers and stretchers. Every alternate course starts with a header at the corner. Queen closure are placed next to queen hood in alternate courses to develop the face lip. Two types, double Flemish bond as well as single Flemish bond. In double ace course, presents the same appearance both in front and back face, presents better appearance than English bond. In walls, having thickness equal to odd multiple of half bricks, half beds, and three quarter beds are used. In single Flemish, use uses uh, English bond backing and double Flemish bond facing can be used for walls having thickness at least equal to one and a half brick. So this become a Flemish bond. So if you see the elevation of Flemish bond, look at this particular elevation. So what is the what is the difference between English bond and Flemish bond? So what happens in English bond? one course would be of headers and one course and the next uh, course would be of stretchers but in case of this flame is born we could we could also see headers as well as the stretchers in a single layer right if you look at the first layer these are stretchers these are headers these are stretchers these are headers so on the same course or on the same layer we have both the faces right so it repeats on every course it repeats on every layer header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher header stretcher so this is the basic difference of flemish bond and english bond english bond uh, we have uh, one course of headers and the next course of stretchers but uh, flemish bond one course would consist of headers as well as the stretchers and if you look at the plan so it is little different from the English English bone. So we need to uh, arrange the bricks like this in this orientation to get the stretchers. And then we have to place the brick to get the headers. So header, stretcher, header, stretcher. Then we need to introduce these closers. So why we have to introduce these closers? If you do not introduce these closers, what would happen? Uh, these joints would come on the same line. Are you getting the point? If we do not introduce these closures on this layers, so these joints would come on the same line. So to avoid this particular thing, we have introduced, we need to, we should introduce these closures to Flemish bond as well as in English bond also uh, on the co corners, we have to introduce closures. Correct. So this is one brick uh, wall Flemish bone. Okay. And uh, this one is one and half brick Flemish bone. Correct. So plan of two, four, six course and plan of one, three, five course. Then uh, this one is one brick wall. This one is one and half brick wall, one and half brick wall. And this one is two brick, two brick wall Flemish bone. Correct. One brick, one and a half brick, and this one is two brick wall, Flemish bond. So uh, what does it mean is if I have to construct a half brick wall, we cannot have Flemish bond. Correct. If I have to construct a half brick wall, I have to go for the stretcher bond. Correct. Then in case of the full brick wall, we can go for Flemish bond, we can go for English bond, as well as we can go for the header bonds. So based on uh, the thickness of the wall, as well as the uh, elevation pattern, we can select all these different types of brick bonds.
but we need proper skill levels or proper uh, you know technically sound uh, people to construct these particular bonds normally uh, if you look at the structures uh, these type of structure uh, these type of brick bonds are uh, you know not um, frequently used in structure because uh, we need uh, proper skill and sound levels to arrange the bricks in this particular fashion correct so uh, this one is one this one is one and a half and this one is two brick wall so a comparison of english and flemish bond english bond is stronger than flemish bond so this is uh, based on some experiments uh, from where we have concluded that english bond is little stronger than the flemish bond uh, flemish bond gives more pleasing appearance and requires greater skill than english bond so we have just discussed that how uh importance to have how important to have you know uh, skill levels to construct flemish bond then broken bricks in the form of beds can be used in flemish bond so in case of flemish bond we we can use um, brick beds but in english bond uh, use of brick beds are discouraged so this is a zigzag bond normally in, in the construction of uh, building walls we do not go for this particular bond zigzag bond uh, when we have to do a brick flooring then only a zigzag bond is used to arrange the bricks so um, comparison of brick and stone masonry uh, stone masonry we have not discussed so uh, but still we can uh, look at this comparisons brick masonry can be constructed with less skill machines in comparisons to stonework hence brick work is cheaper now see stone masonry uh, this is totally based on different geographical locations if i have to construct a building in delhi and if stones are not available or readily available there or uh, in cheap price then uh, we normally do not go for stone masonry we go for the brick masonry it is cheaper also so in those geographical locations where we have uh, ample amount of stones there only we can we should go for the stone masonry construction and to construct a wall with stone it requires a little more skill uh, than to construct a uh, wall of bricks and no specimen lifting arrangement is required for bricks now if you look at uh, the weight of a brick or and the stone unit it is obvious that the weight of the brick is less than the uh, weight of the stone unit because the units of stones comes in larger size and with larger uh, with uh, you know heavy weight so we have to have a special lifting arrangement to construct a wall construct a structure with stones so these type of extra arrangements we do not have to uh, need, you know take in case of a brick construction then brick masonry can be used in any type of mortar mud mortar can be used in low rise houses so uh, in case of brick masonry we can use any type of mortar any type of mortar means maybe we can have a uh, little alteration to uh, you know um, um, produce the mortar but uh, in case of the stone masonry we have to stick to one standard then better fire resistant than stones so it says the bricks uh, are you know capable of uh, resisting fire better than the stones then stone masonry is stronger than brick masonry of same wall thickness it is obvious the stones are you know stronger than the bricks so the wall uh, you know and the, the stone wall is obvi obviously uh, as stronger than a wall of bricks the life of stone masonry longer than bricks and stone masonry doesn't require external plaster so why a uh, um, stone masonry doesn't require an external plaster it doesn't mean that um, you know we do not or we cannot uh, do plastering uh, on a stone wall we can do this but 
what happens in case of a stone masonry we want to uh, make it uh, the way it is we want to uh, retain it the way it is um, so normally if somebody is uh, doing a stone masonry we do not plaster those stone walls but it doesn't mean that we cannot do plaster on a stone masonry correct then stone masonry uh, more watertight than bricks so stones are more watertight than bricks so the walls or the structure with stone are more watertight uh, than the brick walls so uh, these are some defects in brick masonry sulfate attack sulfate salts present in bricks react with hydraulic lime in case of lime mortar and with alumina present in cement mortar volume of mortar increases chipping and spelling of bricks so these type of things happens in a case of brick masonry then crystallization of salts if bricks containing you know soluble salts get dissolved with water appear in the form of fine white crystals on the surface uh, fluorescence corrosion of iron and steel fixture drying and sink shrinkage leading to cracks so these are some basic issue with brick masonry but it doesn't mean that uh, we should not go for brick uh, brick walls or brick masonry so we can avoid these situations uh, by having uh, extra you know treatment on the brick walls so this is not a, a big issue <clears throat> 